Hi, and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Daniel Bergman at Fly Dressing, and today I thought I would show you one of my um, favorite styles of tying nowadays. Uh, it's a quite big streamer, articulated, which means that it has two hooks and a link between them of wire. Uh, this particular pattern is a sort of a customized version of the uh, Grumpy Muppet uh, created by uh, Mike Schmidt. Uh, one funny thing with this uh, fly is that it's 100% uh, synthetic. Uh, no natural furs or feathers whatsoever. Uh, it's a great fly. Especially these colors I've been using quite a lot during during the cold winter months uh, when fishing for for trout. But um, in different colors and also this color, it actually works quite good on on uh, the perch as well. It sinks quite fast, and you can can weight it even even more if you like. Um, but I've done this sort of a uh, what to say like intermediate or slow sinking version that I can fish quite slowly. Uh, so let's get on it. You always start uh, tying the the rear hook or the articulated hook and in this case I'm using uh, the Partridge Attitude streamer in uh, size 2 a little bit smaller than the hook in the front There we go. I'm using a GSP thread gel spun uh, power thread from TechStream just to make sure that I don't break the thread. That's so annoying. There we go. Uh, to start off, I'm using a, a long fiber chenille. Uh, this one is called Long Hair Holographic from Techstream as well. Uh, in a very wintry color, uh, like a white, ice blue, pearlish nuance. Okay, uh, start winding this towards the hook eye and try to strike or stroke the, the material backwards for every turn I make so I don't tie anything down I want to keep as many of the fibers as possible tight turns and I have a full quite a full body on this one and go all the way almost all the way to the hook guy. Tie it off. And trim off the excess without cutting your thread. There we go. Okay, and to add some additional effect on this one, I'm using silly legs. This one is uh, clear with, with silver flakes and a fluorescent orange tip, which is really, really pops when you hit it with the UV light. Try to get all the materials backwards so we don't want, we don't want to tie everything down. There we go. I want to have this on the underside of the hook. So I thread it in under the previous thread turn and then I make a cross with the thread and get about the same length. You can go you can turn the hook upside down if you want to make it easier. Then I tie it down a little bit backwards. There we go. And collect it again. 
Okay, now I want to have a wing of uh, synthetic fur, uh, craft fur from Rainis. It's a really excellent material for winging. Uh, it's sort of, even though it's a synthetic fur, it's actually tapered, and you have you have like an under fur on it. You take quite a big bunch of this. Uh, always take more than you think you will need because you can always take away what you don't want um, afterwards okay I'm I don't want the full length of this so I pick away all the all the longest fibers and uh, I don't want the shortest ones either and it's easy that it becomes a little bit too bulky um, there we go I think that's sort of enough maybe like I don't know four or five centimeters long five centimeters with the longest ones a bit longer I trim off the excess before I tie it in and I just moist it a little bit on my tongue one loose turn pull it loose turn pull it then you make sure that everything is is uh, on the top of the hook and then of course you'll have some some small excess there you can just trim that away there we go what i like with these flies the, is that it's not brain science you don't have to count every thread lap there we go and glue 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 just to make sure everything stays in place just a quick quick finish and now we're done with the with the trailing hook or the articulated part of the fly I always use the uh, leave leave the silly legs hanging in full length to begin with and then I trim them later on if you want you can add some additional stripes to the wing it's very easy to, to paint this uh, craft fur using just a bit darker brown than the tan craft fur I'm using makes for a nice effect there we go next is the front hook now I'm using the same sort the attitude streamer from Partridge but uh, slightly bigger size 1 this time there we go start with making a foundation of thread Trim the excess, go back, I want to get some weight into this guy um, and I'm using these uh, eyeballs, uh, quite heavy dumbbells, they're shaped like two balls you can actually say. I prefer to do this first because then I know how much room I have later on when I'm finishing the fly and I start off with some looser turns and then I do some turns underneath just the dumbbells and then down around the hook and I pull it tight this is why I prefer using this strong thread. There we go. And you crisscross between the eyes. And then once every now and then you do this around previous laps just to secure it down. 
when you feel it's sort of stuck there, you secure it with super glue. Let the drip sink in the thread and secure it. Sometimes it, you get a little bit too much. Then you can just take a dubbing needle and take away if you think it's too much. Okay, cool. And now we want to make a connection between the two hooks. And I take this 20 pound uh, pike wire from Partridge. It's a really thin and subtle uh, coated wire. I take my big ass heavy duty scissors. Trim like maybe 10 centimeters. I just want some extra room to play around with. You don't need 10 centimeters, but it's easier to hold. Then I thread the back hook, fold it, ah. connect the ends, just bring them together. Then I take a small green pearl, plastic pearl, and thread it on, wire, pull it down. I think take a little more a little bigger one uh, fluorescent yellow pull it down there and I finish with a green one these are like little disco effect on these ones and I don't want the space between the front hook and the back hook to be too long so I sort of aim where I want the, the wire to go I try to get the loop in the back to be standing in the same angle as the as the hook. Otherwise, uh, the trailing hook will twist. Okay. Now we need to secure this uh, because you don't want to lose a good fish because you didn't do a proper job getting the wire there. I fold one part back, tie it down, I go forward and fold the other one back and tie it down properly. Bring out the scissors. There we go. Tie everything in with some hard strong turns of the thread. And just to make sure I want to put some just a thin layer of glue there too. Okay, uh, to hide this or hide, uh, just to hide it a little bit uh, this uh, connection here, I want to use a one more wing of uh, craft fur as previous, take a big bunch, cut it off, take away the extremes, and take away some of the under fur. Now I want to keep some of it. Okay, there we go. That's about it. And I lay that on top here. I don't want it to be as long as the back one. It should stop maybe like two, three centimeters uh, before the back one does. Trim off the excess. Two loose turns and get it stuck. Then I want to spread this a little bit on the upper part of the hook. So I just guide it there with my nails there we go trim off the excess a nice hard turns over this package then we need some more of this uh, long hair hollow chenille quite a long 
string because we're gonna cover up most of the frontal hook point with the frontal hook. Okay. Tie it in on the underside of the hook. Make sure it's properly secured. Go forward with your thread and start turning and st stroking backwards all the time. There we go, that's enough. We need to leave room for wing and head as well. Tie it off and cut away the excess. And uh, some more. Take a couple of more of these nice silly legs. I can get a hold of one. Perfect. Turn it upside down. Thread it in. Turn it. And tie it in, pointing backwards. There we go. I see I've tied down some of the chenille pointing forward. Just want to trim that away. Okay, one more wing. Uh, with this tan colored craft fur. This one I want a bit heavier than the previous two ones. I take even more material, trim it off, collect the bunch. And take away the shortest. And the longest. Want this to be a bit shorter than the previous one. It's about appropriate length. Tie it down quite hard. Cover the upper part of the hook with the, with the fur. Trim off the excess. While we're at it here, we can do some more markings on the the craft fur. Sort of forgot to do it on the previous ones. Uh, on the previous one, so just do a couple now. Doesn't matter. Nice. And same here. Try to get the lines aligned with the underlaying wings. Necessary, but I think it looks better. Okay, dokie. Hair clip again to get it out of the way. And I think I'll add just single strand of this thin lateral scale flashaboo. You can always add some extra bling. Okay, I want to make a head, for that I'll do a dubbing loop, go forward with the thread, take a dubbing twister, I'll take a darker nuance of, of uh, crafter here, this is called, I think it's brown. Just brown. That's sort of what it is. Brown. Take quite a large amount as usual. Trim it off all the way close to the fabric. 
Now I don't want the longer fibers at all. I'll take them away. Maximum length of this uh, should be maybe like four or five, four, four centimeters. And I want to keep most of the under fur. Can take away some of it. That should be enough. Stick it in the loop. And I want the the hair closest to the fly. I want that to be a little bit longer. So pull it so it's longest further most far down. Then I try to to stretch the entire carpet of material here. Okay, like so. And start spinning. It's good to use this sort of dubbing twister for this instead of a normal spinner. Because if you take full speed on a dubbing spinner it's easy to just turn everything into a big mess. Then I go after with a like this pet brush and uh, tease out all the fibers or most of them at least so I get like a quite long fiber chenille that's it and get this flashable backwards again then I try to sort of double it as when you're tying a hackle on a on a wet fly or something and start winding when I have like two turns behind the eyes maybe with maximum length then you can start crisscrossing between the eyes try to tease out the fibers all the time you can actually use a dummy needle for this Let's see underneath into the front again and then we're done and I've covered up in the the tie-in point of the dumbbells done quite a messy nice looking head of craft fur you want to make sure everything is in there where you want it put some glue on the thread Tie down and quick whip finish without catching the silly legs. There we go. Okay, now the tying part is done. Take away the hair clip and do some brush work. Make it nice and bushy. There we go. And I'm gonna trim the silly legs to the correct length. There we go. A finished fly. Uh, with some additional UV or fluorescent bling in the tips of the silly legs which makes for a really nice effect when lit up with with the uh, UV light well, there you see how the orange really glows and the fluorescent beads uh, between the two hooks and the eyes as well on the 
on the eyeballs. So, thank you for watching, and for more Articulated Madness, uh, check out the other episodes on the, in the TIE TV playlist. Thank you, bye.